Okay, your assignment is to create um, a simple calculator. This calculator is going to look a little different than what you're used to a calculator looking like. Uh, basically, you're going to have buttons on your screen, ones that say plus and minus and multiply. I made a multiply one right here already, and let me show you how it works. So I click here on multiply, and it says, what's the first number you'd like to multiply? And I can put it any number I want, six, and I can push the check mark. And it says, what's the second number you'd like to multiply? And I'll say 8. And then it says 6 times 8 is 48. I can do it again, just to show you it works with any numbers. 3 times 1 is 21. OK, I'm not going to show you how I did this, but I'm going to show you a couple things that will help you figure out how to do it yourself. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, paint um, a new sprite here on the screen. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to make it just an ugly black box. And I'm going to write a script. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that when I click on Sprite 2, which is the black box, I'm going to ask the user, what is your name? And I'm going to wait for the user to enter it. I'm going to create a variable now. A variable is a place you can store information. You'll need to remember when I was doing the multiplying, you'll need to have the computer remember both numbers so that it can multiply them together. I'm going to show you how you can get this to remember your name and use it again later. So ask, what is your name? I'm going to make a variable, and you can call variables whatever you want. I'll call this one name, and I'll say set name to answer. So when the person answers what their name is, it takes their answer and puts it into a variable called name. So check this out. I click the box, and uh, you can't see it. Let me just make this smaller. OK, there you go. Now you can see it. So what is your name? And I'll say Matt. And nothing happened, but you can see that, that the name variable changed to Matt. Uh, now we'll get it to ask another question. How old are you? Question mark. And then we'll create a variable called age. And I'll say set age to answer. The answer is different now because the user has typed something else in. So check this out. Let me just move my multiply button. So I click it. What's your name? Matt. What is your age? 20. It's not, it's 32. And it remembered both those things. So it remembered my name was Matt and my age was 32. Now I can use these variables now that the computer remembers them. So why don't I have it say something? I'll go to looks and I'll have the computer say hello. And if you remember uh, from today, we learned about the join. So I'm going to have it say uh, hello and then I'll have it say my name, which is under variables now. Hello, Matt. So check this out. I drop that there. I click my box. What is your name? Matt, age 32. And it says, hello, Matt. So it remembers the first thing. And I could have it say something else as well. Uh, say, and I'll use my join operator again. You are variable age. Click it. What's your name? Matt. Age? 32. Hello, Matt. You are 32. Now I can use a common multiple joins to say even more. Uh, so for example, as an example, I can go here to my joint and I can say, you are age. And I can say years old. And if I put that in here, it makes a more complicated sentence. What's your name? Matt. Age? 32. Hello, Matt. You are 32 years old. You'd be able to read that better if I made this smaller. So just one more time, I'll show you how it works.
Matt. 32. Hello, Matt. You are 32 years old. And there you go. So you can use that information to create this multiplier thing. What's the first number? 32. What's the second number? 500. 32 times 500. Okay. So I'm looking for multiply and addition and subtraction and division.